If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this super awesome paleo episode. Was it is, this paleo? A pa- is this a paleo episode? Yeah, because we're here at paleo. Because uh, we're drinking a beer. Uh, half vegan. We're in Austin <laughs> yeah. and we're in the uh, at the paleo FX uh, event area or whatever. Mm. Um, so for the first 40 minutes... Adam, Justin, and myself talk about current events and have some fun conversation. We start out by talking about one of our childhood heroes. Yes. Who's turning out to be a terrible person. He is a terrible, terrible man. Bill Cosby convicted uh, might be going to jail. We talk about that brown fat and cold therapy. That's the kind of fat you get when you go out in the sun, Justin. Oh, we're talking about it. Let's talk about it. <laughs> he gets red fat. Yeah, I get <laughs> It's more of a pink. Come on. Give me some credit. We talk about new brain cells for people in advanced age. We talk about grip strength and longevity. What's the difference between pink and purple? Your grip. And we, talk, we talk about the crisis of masculinity and the future of cars and movement. Uh, then we get into the questions. Uh, the first question was, what's the best way to work on the mysterious hamstring and glute Tie-in. The ham, glute, tie-in. Adam trained people on that all the time. I got coaching schooled people. on this question. <laughs> Justin had no idea what yeah. we were talking about. Oh, we do mention Organifi in that question because I brought their protein powder here to Austin. Using Justin's shaker cup. The Star Wars yeah. one. Matches your underwear, Justin. Dick, I was uh, going to drink it. it, it you know, uh, their protein is really, really good. If you go to their website, you will get a discount for using the code MINDPUMP. The site is OrganifiShop.com. The next question was, when is the optimal time for someone to start anabolic steroids? So this person's heard that if you're natural for a long period of time and then you take anabolic steroids, it's better. But maybe sometimes it's better to get on earlier. Like, which one is better? Which one's worse? We give you our opinion. The next question was, what are our speculations on the human lifespan if all aspects of human health and wellness are optimized? In other words, how long do we think people can live if they're being really, really healthy? And finally, this person is, sounds like they're making us an offer. Yeah. How much money would it take for us to sell out? (laughs) Adam's the cheapest one. The bidding starts on Monday. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know if I'm the cheapest one. I don't know. I want to see numbers. Show me me some numbers. Yeah. yeah, You can message us if you have an offer. Uh, Also, this month, listen, there's three days left to get the no BS six pack formula for free. Three days left. After this month, this promotion will go away. How do you get the No BS six-pack formula? It's a workout for your core. How do you get it for free? Well, you enroll in any MAPS bundle. MAPS bundles or we take multiple MAPS programs, put them together, and discount them like 20 to 30% off. For example, we have a super bundle, which is a year of exercise programming. We include several MAPS programs together, string them together so you follow them through the entire year, uh, burn body fat, build muscle. I mean, at the end of the year, you're going to look awesome. Well, anyway, enroll in any of those bundles. You get the No BS six-pack formula for free. You can find out more about that and more about our individual MAPS programs at mindpumpmedia.com. We're back. We're back. In Austin. Yeah, this has become... I I like this town. I was going to say our second home, but it's more like our third, because I say we we do LA more, right? We do. Just just a little bit more, though. I mean, we've been to Austin quite a few times. How many times? Five now, five or six. No, it hasn't. No. Four? No. Uh, is it really? Yeah, bro. We've been here wow. quite a few times. Oh, shit. Four, four or five? Minimum. Yeah. Yeah. Minimum four or five. Oh, shit. You Still. know, I can't keep track of all the times we've we've gone places now. Well, I can think of that yeah. we stayed here twice, and we've I can think of two other houses, not including the Onnit house, so that's five. Mm. So we've been we've been we've been at least I can think five different houses wow. that we've been in over here yeah. since. What, what a great town! It's um, I love it's it. It's got here. a good personality. The food is the most impressive thing. Oh it's, my god! Oh it's, yeah, it's one of the better food places I've ever eaten at. When we yeah. hit that next level, dude, I'll be flying over here just for the barbecue. <laughs> yeah, next level when I could justify like a, we'll like a thousand dollar flight just for some barbecue. Taylor, <laughs> Taylor can you get a sponsor uh, from uh, La Barbecue, please? Oh yeah. no, guess you know what? You see, Bill, <laughs> Love them. Bill, you is hopping on his private jet service that he he fucks with. Yeah, you know what? Remind me. Don't let me forget. I, I want to reach out to him about that because I think he's connected to that. What do you mean? Is he a partner? He's a part investor. Yeah, he's part stakeholder. Part in uh, what? In, in it's in one of those you know like the the Uber of jets is like the new oh, thing. Shit. Oh shit! Yeah, so yeah. private jet, and then you can you can 
basically Uber. There's obviously a lot of flights from the Bay Area to LA, but people that are flying private jets that are probably flying there by themselves. I wonder what that'll cost, what that'll look like. Yeah, well, I think somebody who travels as much as we do, or like a Tom Bilyeu, it makes sense because of how much we pay for, especially us because how many people we fly with. Mm -hmm. It's not, it'd be different if you're one businessman by yourself, but we fly with a minimum of four or five guys minimum, sometimes more. When you do a private plane, do you have to go through the, like the the security thing? You could roll up with your, your, duffel bag full of drugs and everything. <laughs> no, no, it's a serious question. <laughs> I'm <laughs> seriously answering it. For real? Yes. There's no like, we got to check There's your bags no, and all no, security. Dude. Interesting. No, I did no, not know that. No, that no. Fascinating. Yeah. Oh, okay. What do you think all these these big ass rappers do? No dude? wonder they get their they get their private the they get their private jet and then they fucking smuggle their fucking drugs across the across dude, the country. Dude, speaking of drugs, yes, Bill Cosby guilty. What? Yeah. Guilty. When was that Ultimate announced? You ready? Date rape druggist. When was this announced? Yeah. N- today. What? Yes. So trip off Bro, this. he's going to go to jail. 30 years. How what? old is he? 30, he could face up to 30 years. Oh, okay. He, oh, okay. They, well, haven't given, they haven't sentenced him yet. Which means he'll do five. <sighs> Whatever. He's 80. No, he's 80. It's got to be like the rest of his life. You know, just locked Dude. up. So, okay. Basically. Yeah. So basically this is a really bad question to ask but i mean you have to you have to think this is a possibility that he he takes his life bro if he has to go to if he goes to jail what do you bro, think I, you know, 80 something year old let's think about think about that for a second think about what that would do like to your ego being someone as as massive oh, as that yeah. person is your entire life not just massive but love he believes yes, he is untouchable that's what i'm saying yeah and then to be i don't care being in prison for w- one year i would i would think that you got to be on high alert watch that guy because he, that, if he goes in prison, they'll put yeah. him in a separate area for I sure. See that, no, but right? I mean taking his life before he goes oh, in. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I mean that's what I think. I think you're that old already, and you're like, I mean, that's that. Why this, that would be really tough yeah. to get someone like that to go. If it's like five years or more, if it's maybe one year and they figure something, but I doubt it's going to be that. Dude, small. I was reading the story, dude, and it's it's, it's crazy, man. It's crazy, and it, I mean, apparently he'd give women wine and pills, and then a couple of them or a few of them woke up with him doing shit to them. I mean, how fucked up is that, dude? And how do you get away with that for so long? You know, it's just that celebrity. Yeah, Everybody you get... loves you so much. It's like yeah. they just like ignore signs that are like right there in front of you. Well, bro, you know how powerful celebrities can be, especially at that level. You know what I mean? And, and also, you're putting yourself out there when you put something. So, so usually yeah. what happens, what t- tends to happen how in do these you, cases. What I want to know is how they prove that. Enough to get him to get him there were, killed. There were, like five, there were like six women. Were they all aspiring actresses, or they're trying to like get you know ahead? And, yeah, but they had to. They, okay, let's think about that. For Just a because you know, the, the fucked up way to think. Yeah, back but think in the about day, this. It was like, oh, okay. so I get up. You were innocent until proven guilty, and right. when you've got the kind of money that Bill Cosby has, you've got a fucking legal team that's going to find every way to get you out of this. This was a retrial possible. because the first time they were deadlocked, the, the jury was deadlocked. So this is another trial because of that one. And this one he lost. Oh wow! Yeah, you're right. But you're right. Yeah, he's got an wow. incredible. Legal so that, team. so to me that says that there had to have been some really damning evidence for him to get fucked. When you have multi- like crazy, when you have multiple women, multiple women telling the same kind of story, that's still not enough. Yeah, that's still not enough. Need, like hard that's, that's not that's not that's not guilty. I mean, that's just because just because fifty people say it doesn't mean shit. You, they gotta have they gotta have some some tangible fucking evidence, bro. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the whole case. Videos no or recordings of conversations sure or text did. messages or something. I mean, to get to get him, bro. Oh, I'm sorry. More than fifty women came forward with sexual assault. Oh claims. my god. More than fifty. It's my bad. Like a, more than fifty. More than fifty or fifty or more. Yeah. A serial asshole. Yep. Yep. He could face up to. 30 years in prison. Wow. I mean, at what point is it at one point is it get crazy and ridiculous like that because apparently he got pissed off in the in the in the in the in the, the room or whatever. The, what is it called? The courtroom. He's like, yeah. "What guy hasn't tried to get a girl fucked up?" Oh uh, my god. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Why am I the held? 70s? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. The just because I because more women want me. The judge is like, "Yeah, now you're going now you're going to get put to death." Sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Making that yeah. stupid comment. Yeah. Fucking crazy though cuz for me, I don't know. I mean, our generation, we grew up with Cosby was... Oh, man. He was like, like Mr. Rogers. Yes. Yeah, he yes. was like so squeaky He's clean. the black Mr. Rogers. Yes. Well, didn't he... He actually... I remember it was Eddie Murphy. I think it was Eddie Murphy. Bro, he was sponsored by Jell-O. He, he talked <laughs> shit say, about like Eddie Murphy because he was Murphy sponsored by Jell-O, dude. You can't get any more yeah. like in family household, dude. Like oh, that's yeah. like... He's in everybody's Kids household. He'd say the darndest things. You know, like he was this, all about like the, the father guy. Dude, this just points to how crazy our psychology is when, when it comes to celebrities. We see someone on TV play this character. 
he's this great dad Dude, on the that's Cosby why I show. don't ever trust any Ned Flanders motherfucker. No. No, you know what I mean? No, no, like no. anybody that's like super, you know, but, like but, careful with But what my point doing. is my point is we know he's acting. We know yeah. he's playing a character, you know, and yet we think, oh, he's such a good guy, and it blows our minds to Because we want to believe that. Yeah. But we, that's what I'm saying. We don't yeah. know him. Yeah. Nobody knows him, you know? That's know. crazy to me. It, that was shocking though. God, yeah. dude. Exactly. Kind of, I used to love Cosby, Cosby show, like all that, you know. Like he was he was a great comedian. Did you ever watch his comedy stand-up shows? Uh, they yeah. were hilarious. He's, he's great, bro. Yeah. He, and he never remember he never cussed uh, at his shows. He was he had always great like, stories. Yep. Yeah. So okay, yeah. so, so let me ask you this. He was like the anti Eddie Murphy. So how do you yeah. guys how do you guys feel about him then? Now? Just period. I don't know. What are your thoughts on him? Well, before all I don't this, know, man. <laughs> before all this, I thought he was hilarious. I thought he was a great comedian. Loved him as an actor. I mean, after hearing this, he's a. I mean, if the, if it's true, which which the jury thought it was true, he's a fucking scumbag. He's a serial rapist. He's disgusting. Yeah. He's one of the worst. You know, that's he's like at the bottom of the of the bucket of scum or whatever. That's you know. It, I mean, think about if, if again the jury thinks it's true. Yeah. And if it is true, this is a man that had women in his home and he drugged them to to fuck. To fuck with their their you know unconscious bodies. Yeah. That's terrible. So I'm gonna play devil's advocate just because just because. But you know, imagine the guy's eighty something years old. You said right or seventy something. How how old is? I don't know. Eighty. Mm. I think he's eighty. Okay, so let's just say he's, he's, he's okay. So and he, we're talking super famous, yeah. super super yeah. famous. He's, like one of the he's most on famous. Top. Okay, yeah. so I, I mean, I don't know how much you guys followed Charlie Sheen and stuff like that. When Charlie Sheen used to openly talk to Playboy and stuff about all the women that he would that he'd sleep with and stuff like that. And Charlie Sheen was going running through like a thousand women a year, mm -hmm. like literally mm -hmm. a thousand different women a year he was going through, and he knows he's beyond the tens of thousands of women. Yeah. So. If someone like that is is making that much con sexual Sounds content, like like a super and you say you say a number like fifty women are coming forward and saying that he basically fed them alcohol sure, and true. drugged them and stuff like that, I mean, how many guys do you know? Are I mean, people joke about it all the time about feeding girls alcohol and trying to get them drunk, yeah. and girls do it to guys too. Yeah, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But you see both sexes do that. Yeah. I've had that. Hap I had that happen to me when yeah. I was 21 years old, and I had a 30 something year old woman fucking feed me shots all night long, yeah. and then holding my hand and take me to the bedroom well, and stuff so like that. Like that's so that shit. It happens on both sides. Now she's now she probably does not have the pool, the celebrity pool, as he does. Doesn't have uh, doesn't have thousands of options like me coming to around her all the time. So maybe she doesn't get to that level. But somebody like Bill Cosby, who's probably at you know through his you know his prime and his peak years of of fame, was probably going to fucking celebrity parties where people are throwing themselves already at him every single day. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he throws some drinks. Well, and hey, you want some Percocet? You want right. some? You know what I'm saying? Like, now, and, and I'm not saying that that makes him. I'm not like defending him right now. Right. But could it be like? Is it that fucking crazy? I don't. Well, here's is the thing. That crazy. Here's really? the thing. He he was, uh, you know, giving women drugs, and then they would wake up, mm -hmm. and he was doing things to them. Um, and here's the thing with cases like this. Yeah, that's a good point. That's that, that's taking to another. Well, level, right? I mean, I look. At so, everybody, most people have had sex with other drunk people. Mo and when you're drunk, you make different decisions. You just do. That's not a problem. A lot of people have sex while on drugs. In fact, that's one of the reasons why people like to do drugs is then they do drugs and then they go have sex. And so they're not in their normal state of mind. But unconscious, it, that's a whole different. That's that's uh, you know what I mean. That's so blatant, oh, yeah. so obvious. Somebody's yeah. unconscious. It's just that's evil. It's, yeah. yeah. It's like, what else it's, is it? How, yeah. how else do you want to define it? Yeah. And I don't know. We don't know. I mean, the, all the, the the stuff in the in the in the case. Yeah. I wish that. I knew details because yeah. that yeah. stuff too. That I mean, you're talking Here's, about an area all that, that shit matters. Though, one, yeah, yeah, it does because one person can interpret that. as... Well, that's why uh, I didn't want to. I didn't want to get on the train of just like immediately, you know, bastardizing him or anything. I just want to wait till you know all unfolds, get more information. I, yeah. Anybody that in, especially if they're a celebrity. Because you just know that, like, well, they're you, just a huge target. They're a huge target, and and if and think about that's like, scary. These, by the way, the, all these women that came forward, you got to believe, uh, were are going to get settlement cases out of this. Yeah. He's going to get nailed huge financially. Yeah, sure. Well, if he lost this, they would have gone straight to just civil you know, lawsuit. Civil court, or, yeah, yeah, just like with OJ Simpson. Right, right. Yeah. So they're but, gonna, they're they're going to get all paid, and, I'm, and dude, and here's and the rightfully thing. so. If if you were taking advantage like that and raped or anything, yeah. you have to, you know, I 100 percent agree that you should be. Yeah. But I do know. Okay, and I mean they in the my buddies that are all in sports they call them cleat chasers. 
Yep. And you know, there's there's girls that are literally just out to try either impregnate you or no, get you a, caught up. A real and thing. then and because you're already making yeah. millions of dollars, they'll go away for a half a million because it's no big deal yeah, to yeah, them. Yeah. And so yep. there's this is the, that's the thing, man. You become a big target. You you need to be if you're a celebrity, like you be very careful with what you do and who you do it with because you've got a big money sign yeah. above your head. And you and you probably would spend a lot of money to make people be quiet because your fame or whatever your character, what be the per- public persona is your business. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. So that's just I just I do the math. And I know how old he is, and I say 50, 50 women that came forward to do that. That's two a year over the last twenty five years. Well, so two parties a year when he was in Hollywood, Hollywood doing a line of coke and getting crazy and fucked up and hot chick feeding her drinks like crazy, yeah. throw her some pills. Shit gets crazy. This younger girl ends yeah. up sleeping with this older guy, and then of course she regrets it later on and says like, "Oh no." That can definitely. I mean, right, stuff like right, that right. can definitely happen. There's so many of them. And remember, the jury the first time was deadlocked. This time, they were unanimous. They were definitely unanimous. So yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's it's an interesting crazy. It's, it's, cra- so it's crazy, crazy because it's him. You know yeah. what I mean? But that much money, that much power, that much access, I mean, I don't I'm not a big fan of celebrities, you know. It's just it's a it's a it's a weird here's the thing too, like we hear you you hear things like that and you think what an evil monster. I mean, humans are capable of some right. really fucked up shit and I can't imagine being in a position where you're that where where people everybody around you all the time tells you how fucking awesome you are. You have anything you want. Right. You have all this money, but you don't really need the money because people give you free shit all the time. You're the, you're, ever, you're so beloved. You you get away with whatever you want. Like how that fucks with your that could be poison for your psyche. Poison right. for you. Oh yeah, I agree. I, that's why you see these kids just, you know, they kill themselves or overdose at such young ages when they get famous. It's just yeah. it's not something that I would necessarily I would definitely wouldn't want that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, I hear you. I don't know, man. Crazy. All right, let's talk a little bit about some fitness science because there was something else that I read over the weekend that I thought was really cool. So they identified these, I'm going to try and pull up the study, immune cells in fat, in brown fat. You guys know the difference between white and brown fat? Yeah, you're going to go, I mean, this is a, you bring this up right now, but it hasn't Rhonda Patrick been talking about this yeah, for a long, long time. time. She's been talking about how uh, cold, cold contrast mm-hmm. activates brown fat. And, but what they're finding is that the immu- that there's immune cells within the brown fat, and that's their job. Their job is when you're cold to activate thermogenesis and burn fat to warm you up. Mm-hmm. Babies have a lot of this, by the way. So babies are really chubby because they have these like little heaters. But this just points to, think about this for a second. We evolved to have this system that turns on when we're cold to warm us up. It's a natural system in our body. How often do we turn that fucking thing on? In, well, I mean, we've been, we've been saying this forever with the whole. <laughs> so I mean, I've look comfortable. I've told everything. you guys since we've started Mind Pump. Probably the arguably the most game changer thing I ever it started to do was the hot cold contrast. Right. Yeah, I right. mean that's been it's. I can. I used to be someone who gets sick all the time, yep. dude, all the time. And it's, it's like your- everything, every technology advancement we've made to make our lives more convenient and easier. It's like it's biting us in the ass. Yeah. You know, it's like I'm sure there's going to be some study about sleeping with a pillow, you know, how it's fucks well, you up can- your neck and like, you know. There's going to be something that comes out, you know, with we we try to like make something in our life like more cushioned, more comfortable, more soft. And every time we do that, well, we, think about it, it this way. Us. The immune system uh, is a learning. Uh, it's like a it's like a very interactive learning part of our body. It, it's it, you develop a signature. And when you're exposed to things, it changes itself to what you're exposed to. You can strengthen it. It can become resilient. It can become weak because it's not being exposed to certain things. This is why autoimmune issues or many times connected to lack of exposure to other germs and stuff. You know, they call it the, uh, you know, the clean hypothesis or whatever, where p- kids born on farms tend to have lower rates of allergies and asthma and autoimmune issues than kids who live in urban areas or whatever. And, th- and again, they think it's exposure to animals and stuff like that. So this is a part of your immune system. This is a part of your immune system designed to warm you up. And we're not training it. We're literally not training it. So that part of our immune system... Can become can, becomes dysfunctional. At, at best, it stops working really well. But maybe at worst, maybe causing maybe a cause of disease. Yeah. And, w- and the fact that we evolved to have this this switch that turns on through cold tells me that we were exposed to cold a lot. Yeah. And it's probably something we we evolved to require. Mm-hmm. Like we evolved to require sunlight, or we you know we need certain stressors in our you know in our body. So it's like cold. Cold may be an extremely important part of your life. Like, I don't take hot showers anymore. 
I always I'll go in hot and I always go cold for at least a minute or two afterwards. Yeah. So Every brown time. fat is it leaner? Like looking like if you ever seen a cadaver between like brown fat versus like just regular fat? I think that's just referring to literally the color. The color but, changes. Yeah, but but no brown fat. When you have a lot of brown fat, you have a high thermogenic ability and it's easier for you to burn body fat. And here's you know there's a lot of people who say you can convert white to brown fat through different methods, and this may be right. one of them to develop this part of your immune system. Mm. I mean, I tell you what, the Eastern Europeans have been using, they've been using cold, you know, mm-hmm. therapy or whatever you want to call it for a long fucking time. Little mm-hmm. kids, they do it. The polar bear, what do they used to call that? The, that polar bear crew that would go swim, like, you know, in, in freezing water all the time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, little kids, have you seen the videos of the, like the Russian kids who, it's, they're like eight years old and it's snowing outside. And yeah. then for the recess, they go outside in their bathing suits and they Mixed play the in the snow and yeah. pour water on themselves and shit. That's crazy. <laughs> I would die if I did it's that. Gnarly. It's nuts, though. I mean, we, we live in this world where we get in our car and we have the AC. Or, I mean, shoot, I, there's time, I catch myself doing this all the time. I mean, I have the push start thing through the window, right? So I, in the wintertime, I start it up before I even get there so it's nice and warm. My seats are warm when I get inside the car. You know what I'm saying? I leave my house that's, you know, 75 degrees, yeah. tropical, you know, but it's, just, <laughs> but it's supposed to be freezing outside, you know, yeah. but I don't know what it's like to be like that. Yeah, and then I yeah. go into a building that we work at that we keep yeah. it at a temperature, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. No, and it, you know what it's done for me is learning about this more and more and just understanding the human systems and how they need to be challenged. Not because necessarily it's the challenge, but but more so because it strengthens these systems and you need to exercise them. Just like you need to exercise your muscles. I mean, you go to the gym and you stress out your muscles, not for the stress, but for the adaptation because it's good for you. And if you don't stress your muscles ever, they deteriorate and you lose that function of your body. And so the ability to acclimate to heat and to cold, think of it as a muscle. And, right, and if you exercise it, it gets stronger and it gets healthier if you don't exercise it, it it deteriorates and becomes less healthy and we know the right. you know what that you know what that what that means and so anyway for me at least understanding that i've developed a new relationship with cold so mm-hmm. i used to hate fucking mm-hmm. jump into cold water do cold shower you're fucking crazy like and now i like embrace it more because i know what it's doing for me mm-hmm. it's totally different now oh i agree totally 100%. different 100% so uh so another thing that i read over the weekend that i wanted to share i've been, been holding on to this so they did a study on. Uh, so it used to the belief used to be that young people grow brain cells, can grow new brain cells, and as when you get old, it just that just stops happening. But what they're finding now is older people's brains can also uh, build new brain cells. They can all they also have that ability. Now it's not as good as when you're young, mm. but it's still there if you're healthy and you take care of yourself. One of the things that tells the brain to do that is this uh, compound called. Um, BDNF, well, brain wait, derived. But you got to back up first before you go into the science of it. Like, what, what does that, a study like that even look like to prove that point? Like, how do they do that? Like, what are they? Are you telling me that there's people that are 80 years old that they've just now They're, found that like, oh wow, neurogenesis is still happening? Or they something? were they, so they 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 researched they autopsied uh, hippocampus uh, parts of the brain from 28 previously healthy individuals aged 14 to 79 who died suddenly. So these are all, they, so they took the brain out and they actually studied it and they were looking for newly formed neurons and the state of blood vessels within the entire human hippocampus soon after death. And then what they found is that, that, that there was evidence that, the, that there was new brain cells being developed in the old brains and in the young brains, which we kind of thought we kind of lost that ability, or at least that was you know what, what people were saying. Although there's a lot of scientists that were speculating that, that we probably did. Well, I thought I mean that's exactly what what fasting promotes, right? Isn't mm-hmm. that I mean that's neurogenesis is the, the ability to do that. So I would think that even somebody that's healthy and takes care of themselves and they're 75 or 80 that implements this you know fasting yep. protocol every once in a while yep. could potentially develop more. Well, one of the best ways to get this to happen is uh, exercise. Exercise causes the release of what I was saying earlier BDNF, which is this uh, chemical that tells the brain to develop Sounds new like brain a metal cells. Band. BDNF. BDNF. <laughs> 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 yeah, so um, but exercise is a fantastic uh, you know way to do that and of course exercise when you're talking about like keeping your brain healthy I don't think there's anything that's been shown to be as effective or you know alone by itself as uh, as exercise and movement for keeping the brain healthy. Very very strongly connected to having a healthy brain is having a strong body. In fact, they have a study now that they're showing where they can predict your they can predict your odds of having, you know, uh, of dying all-cause mortality based on your grip strength 
What? Yeah. <laughs> I think you brought Crazy. this up before, and I was like, let's yeah. get at the fact. Well, yeah, well because grip strength is a good me- – like the average person, when you measure their grip strength, it'll tell you better than pretty much anything else, and it's easy, um, how – generally strong how they are. physical they probably yeah are. or just right. how strong they are like if they have a weak grip they're probably not good at they probably can't squat they probably can't yeah. do anything else. yeah which means they're probably not very physical people that's where if it. you have a naturally good yeah. grip means you're probably doing more active physical things that's it you don't have near muscular control yeah. or anything yeah. Yeah. yeah plus it's a good it's an easy test right they could just squeeze something yeah. instead of having to get people to get up and move and stuff so it's a test that they're using now and they're showing that if you have like if your grip is weak uh, as you get older, then you it's strongly connected now to just poor everything, poor health, poor mental function, all cause mortality goes up. But really, we we know it's just obviously it has nothing to do with the grip. Right. It's showing that they're probably more fit, right, healthy, right. and active, or oh, whatever. That's so, cool. Yeah, kind of interesting stuff. But that's really interesting. It's it's uh, to me it's fascinating because with exercise, especially with resistance training, the the older you get, if you're fit, the older you get, the further you separate yourself from your peers. Like a, you know, like a, like when you're when you're 25 years old and you're fit, like you work out and you eat right. Oh yeah, we've talked about this on the yeah. show before. Right? There's not that hu- there's not a huge difference between you and average 25 year old. There's a big difference, but not huge. Boy, you're if you're 70 years old and you exercise and you eat right and you've been doing so for a long time, and you compare that person to the average, you know, person of the same age or you know who doesn't do those things, th- there's a huge difference. It's yeah. like night and day. You've got someone who's who, who needs help all the time? I, I really started to notice about. that when we started to hit our thirties. Mm-hmm. When we started to hit our is 30s. that when you saw it in your friends? Yeah, that's when yeah. I really noticed in, in just all friends that you, it's like a tipping point, and then yeah, you really see the visible the visible effects of it. For in, sure. in the twenty in our twenties, I felt like uh, everybody, even people that were like non fitness or ex athletes or whatever, like that friends of mine, everyone had their like ups and down waves where they would get back and forth and shit. At thirty. You know, especially if you're married by then or what like that, like the, almost everybody I know, just like that's when they just write it off. So it, it gets it's it accelerates fast as you get close to forty. Yeah. yeah. So I noticed the same thing. So I have, not, there's nine cousins that we all grew up. Uh, and we're all around around the same age, and then we all have friends that grew up with us that we know. So we're all like, uh, there's a lot of guys I'm relatively close to who that we've known each other since we were either babies or maybe kids, right? Mm-hmm. And I remember. I've always been the fitness guy. And a few of my cousins have been active and stuff like that, but I've always been the one that's really into, you know, fitness and nutrition. And when we were in our teens and I was doing it, not a, you could barely tell the difference. By the time we were in our 20s, I mean the difference was oh Sal's kind of buffed and, and these guys aren't. That was really the only difference. Yeah. Once we hit 30, I remember I, I'd run in, I'd see some of these people, some of my cousins and who I haven't hadn't seen for like 3 or 4 months, like there's a wedding right now, right? So there's and these are my second cousins. So there'd be a wedding going on. I'd show up and I'd look at be like, "Holy fuck, does homeboy have a He's got a belly. Like he's never had a belly. He was yeah. skinny. Yeah. That's so weird. Yeah. That happened in the 30s. Now that I'm getting in the 40s, oh, oh, it's not that anymore. Now now a belly is common. Everybody has a belly. Yeah. But now what's happening is fucking problems, yeah. health problems. Yeah. Like oh I like homeboy had a had a panic attack or this mm-hmm. oh I pulled my back the, last week because I was trying to pick up a case of yeah. water. Like my knee hurts all the time, and I'm like, "Oh shit, this I'm is on getting my bad." Third back surgery. Like, uh, what? It's, it's starting to get way cre- too young for that shit. I'm actually starting to hear people now, because I'm 30. How old am I now? 39, right? So I'm 39. I'm hearing guys now, which means it's been happening for a little while, because it's not something dudes like to tell each other that like they're not as like sexual, like you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Like oh, not yeah, like yeah. They're, they're you know? Yeah. Elephant in the room. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. No, it's it's know. it's happening at a, a much earlier age than before, too, mm-hmm. dude. And I, I think a lot of this has to do with, I mean, we talked earlier about how cool it is, all these electric bikes and stuff that's all over <laughs> yeah. the place. But I think we're just becoming <laughs> yeah. fucking, I mean, uh, sedentary. It's not going to help us. As fuck, it's dude. I mean, us. we are not moving around whatsoever. So the moment you make that switch in your mind that like uh, health and fitness isn't isn't like a priority we're for ho- me. We're homogenizing, dude. Yeah. Totally. We're homogenizing. Totally. Like you, you like, ma- like, the, like maleness, testosterone and strength and muscle and all that stuff is... It's just declining. It's, it's just the it's merging not, of AI. Man. Are we part of the rebellion? Is yeah. 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 Exactly. We're going to be <laughs> the only Justin one in the resistance. Just it gets hell excited when I, you know, when you, I throw Star you Wars terms see this? out. <laughs> you can't even see this. I love to do that every once in a while. Oh. Just serve up a Star Wars term real quick. Like, yes, you guys. Yes. The Empire. Yeah, I could have yeah, convinced, convinced them to make a shirt right after that if I wanted to. Be part of the rebellion. <laughs> right. Just wait, dude. In the news, there'll be a death ray. And you guys will be like, I'll be like, yeah, I knew. I knew it was coming. Dude, the 
first you the, guys, I've been preparing. The first time I realized that the that the that Luke and all those guys were the terrorists, it blew my mind. I'm like, <laughs> wait a minute, they're the terrorists. I know, I know, right? <laughs> no rebellion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. different. No, no. I think we're homogenizing, dude. I think men are becoming more and more less men. Yeah. You know, there's a crisis of masculinity going on right now, and people think it's no. They think there's too much masculinity. Not true. It's the opposite. And part of that crisis is absent fathers, men who won't take fucking responsibility. You know how many guys now I know in their 30s and 40s are still like fucking kids? Like they're acting like kids because they don't have no responsibility. They do what they want. They work a little bit, whatever. You get all these guys that leave their, you know, they'll get someone pregnant and they'll take off. And, and of course, we got lower testosterone levels and all. There's a crisis of masculinity. It's fucking crazy. It's, yeah. it's throwing things in an interesting. How far do you think situation? we'll go before we swing back? We all, I believe, we'll swing back. We'll swing back. We will not. We're not. We're not literally going to become one. We're not going to be all fucking like Ken dolls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, it's you know, it's got to go. <laughs> Where'd it go? Oh shit! It's got to go extreme, and then it, we'll, we'll we'll work our way back. So the question is, like, how far do we go before we make the well? Mm-hmm. What I think's gonna ha- what I think's happening. What may happen is, as men become more feminine, women will become more masculine. To meet right in the middle. That's exactly oh, what I think is going to start to happen. Yeah. That's, that's exactly. And and I don't mean this in the like stereotypical way. I mean this in the you know in, in like deeper ways. You already seen you've already seen this now for a few gen- for a couple of gen- happening. You're, yeah, I've already seen it for a couple of generations where you have a a, a, a a sizable chunk of of children are being raised without fathers, and so the moms are taking on the roles of you know that kind the of masculine and, and feminine. Yeah, masculine and feminine. And again, it's not, I'm not being stereotypical here. That can mean a lot of different things, but I think single moms know what I'm talking about. And uh, it's, it's been like that for a little while. So yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of interesting. I don't know if it's all, it's all part connected or if it's all coincidental. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's partially coincidental. And I think that we're piecing it together. And I think that there's pros and cons to that. And I think that when we start, like always as humans, we press boundaries and we push things and we wait till oh my God, this is unhealthy or this is bad or this mm-hmm. is killing lots of people or whatever it may be. And then we start to address it. But we, it just, I think, but I also think it's necessary. Mm-hmm. I think these, I think it's necessary yeah. that there are people pushing boundaries and that's why I don't judge about it. Yeah. I love to talk about it. I love to have dialogue about these types of conversations, but I don't judge over it. Like, to- I, yeah, I still feel like we're all really pressing forward for something. Like, we're all trying to work towards something, like a creation of something, and this being like, you know, the advancements. And we don't want to stop and like work on ourselves. We want to like work towards this thing. It's like we're obsessed with like, you know, oh well, we're in a rush to create. You know, artificial intelligence. We're in a rush to create the nuclear bomb. Like yeah. we're, we're always like finding something that we have to like find meaning and purpose through yeah. like creation, and we can't like be present and experience. You know, I, I think life. That's, I think that's coming. I think we'll always be that way. Yeah. Well, no, yeah, I, it's, I, it's, I, it's like an addiction no, we all have. I think it's coming. I think once we get what we think we want, we're gonna realize it's not what we want. You know what I mean? Yeah. Once we have like everything is super, super, super easy and, you know, AI is doing a lot of hard work for us and we're plugged in and, you know, it's like, oh, now we figured out aging and all this stuff. I think at that point, if we're still around, I think humans are going to be like, oh, well, we have everything we thought we wanted, but we're miserable. Like, you know, yeah. what's going on here? And then I think people will start to look. Both worlds deeper. will exist and you'll, we'll push those boundaries <laughs> and yeah. they, I really do. You know, we'll laugh, get our own plan. I laugh because it's like that sci-fi story you always yeah. bring up. We're going to have the people who are connected. Yes. People are not going to be connected. You can yeah. see They're that. They're going to go to war. Connected, you can connected. see that, right? You can yeah. just, and, and I don't know. They live underground. Like, I don't think they're going to go, I don't think it's going to be weird and like warlike, but I definitely think eyes. that there'll be people that, one will never choose the life of being plugged in because they mm-hmm. just want to rebuke it since day one. And then you'll have the other group that have experienced it and know that it's not all that's cracked up to be. Yeah. And so then they'll be on the other side. And then you'll have those that think that it's been the greatest thing ever for them because, yeah. you know, before, 20 years before, someone uh, with the amount of money they had wouldn't be able to experience all these things. Like that's yeah. what's happening is everything is becoming so accessible. Mm-hmm. We were talking about this before and I Everything said, we think we want. Right, in the car yesterday we were talking about it and I said, you know how, and I tell Katrina this and I stand by this, that we're looking at buying a new car right now because it's, it's time for us, all, almost all our vehicles are over 100,000 so we're going to need one or get one soon. And so I tell her, you know, really think about what you want to drive because this would probably be the last vehicle we drive that you buy yeah. that we buy yeah. right because and i believe that such a trippy statement but i'm totally on board dude if, if yeah. not this one the next one 
I mean, I don't, I don't think you're far off at all. Yeah. I, I, I think it's, I think it's, we're watching it speed up right yeah. now in front of us. Yeah. I mean, I'm already seeing it. Like, if I lived downtown, I would not want a car right now. For mm-hmm. what? Yeah, it would, be, it would be an. It would, with these little scooters and bikes all over the place, like that uh, would. Yeah. Here's, here's, here's what a car provides you with currently. It provides you with more freedom. In the future, it's going to be a, an, it's going to be a, a liability. It's going to be a cost, and it's going to be yes. less freedom. Yes, that's and a great that's way why. to put it. It's going to be a liability. Yep. Be a, and people will almost mock people that still drive because there'll be that transition. Period. Yeah. We go over and you'll be like, "What you you spent a hundred thousand dollars on a car? So can we at least get I'll drive any. I'll something? drive. Listen, I'll, I'll drive you know any saying? car I want for the rest of my life for that price. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying. That kind of money, you're going to be able to. Dude, I want the Iron Man suit just to get to work. <laughs> <laughs> you know <what> I <laughs> just took that way too far. <laughs> so <laughs> awesome would that be? <laughs> we won't. Be, I don't think we'll be flying around in Iron Man suits. Oh, in, come on! At like, this time, there's yeah. got to be some fun. I, I, shit that's what, we that's what happens when we give them too much weed. I know, right? <laughs> or or bring up Star Wars, shit. right? Like yeah, that's what I get for feeding them that way. Right? Like, <laughs> now his brain went all that way. Like, oh my god! Yes, you guys want to go there? Let's go there. Yeah. This is what's gonna happen. Well, I, I, let's, I, let's really dive into this. Guys. At, so, at some point, it'll be it'll be illegal to drive on most roads. 100%. It'll be illegal for you to personally drive on most roads. At some, at some point, it's going to be all automated, and you driving on the road is going to be more dangerous than not. And it, so you know, it's, our, it's already getting more and more popular, and I see it all the time with people I know that do have a, a lot of money to spend and buy like really, really expensive cars that they just drive on the weekends. Yep. It's exactly that. They go take yeah. it to the track, and that's what it'll look like. I, I mean, that's why I'll never sell my classic car because I think it'll just continue to go up in oh, value. Yeah. It'd be so rare. You I'm know what I'm saying? a classic car. I'm going to have like a four-wheel drive truck so yeah. that way I can go like mud on some track. There's going to be a specific track where I can like, you know, rally my truck on. Oh, I totally people who awesome. own, People who own cars are going to be very wealthy people. Same yeah. kind of people that own horses now. Like if you have money now, if you own horses we're, or we're if you're a farmer. Equ- equestrians. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I mean, think about it this way. I've been, I've been thinking about this a lot and I've, I've been trying to think about all the different ways because people don't realize that modern society was based on the car like mod- americans particular mm-hmm. was was designed and developed around the you know the, the railroad changed everything oh. and then the car changed everything even further and so everything was designed around the personal ownership of a car well, and when the that assembly line right yeah, With well, Ford? yeah when that when that era is over when that ends because it now costs you you know, a thousand or two thousand dollars a year total to go anywhere you want with a car because right. you'd have to pay for insurance, you don't pay for gas. It's cheap. It's super accessible. I'm tr- I try to think about all the different things that will change. And the, the easy ones are like all the space that's dedicated to cars, like yeah, garages, garage. you know, parking lots, like all, like parking lots at stores Just the and sidewalks. Malls. But here's here's how amazing it will be to have open roads. Yeah, or bigger. You know, well, you're still gonna have to drive, but you know, yeah, here's, but it's not all blocked up. Yeah, I don't know how cars. much. That, I don't know how much all that stuff will change uh, because you're still gonna need the cars to take people around. You just won't be owning them. You, you so those be, these parking lots now will be filled with like those are like a parking lot, like a parking garage that you would see downtown now mm-hmm. will be will be owned by a company well, that has all these cars in there and yes. those cars go well, out and go pick people well, up. Well, here's do an stuff. interesting thought. Yep. Here's an interesting thought you just made me think of because yeah, I know I know that, but I don't think they would I think if you're the mall and you own a parking lot because you have to, I think you're looking at that as new space you can lease to stores or whatever. That's my point. Like it's going to completely change the landscape oh, yeah, of yeah, how, yeah. how 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 things are like but you made me think about something which is really interesting. Would it be marketable or would it be in the market's best interest or in a company's best interest? To provide its own yes. pickup service. Yes. So now you want to go shop at fucking Macy's or whatever. Mm-hmm. Instead of paying for a fucking car to come pick you up, they offer free service only to their location. Oh, wow. So now you can go shopping and it costs you nothing. And more or than, you can go to a restaurant. And, and where we're going with all that, it's you won't even go. It'll be delivered to you. Yeah. Just like everything else. Well, you else. still want to go places though. I don't know. That's what's scary. There'll be like showrooms. What's scary about where we're going and why I always keep going. I know I like a broken record talk about the steps in the movement. It's because I'm just so blown away by the lack of movement. We are getting closer and closer to Mm -hmm. stepping less and moving less and less and everything coming to us. I mean, it's only going to get worse. Mm. It's going to get worse before it gets better. I mean, I think we can all agree on that. And if oh, it's yeah. how how can it get much? If we're averaging four thousand, how can we get steps? Uh, yeah. yeah. How can we get much <laughs> less worse than that? I mean, that's literally if you walk and we timed it, we talk about this. I mean, that's thirty minutes of straight just walking. So that means you're not even walking thirty minutes yeah. in an entire day, and that's yeah. going to get probably just less. Everybody's on segways. Yes. Well, well you'll you'll have the, like those little scooters yeah. will be parked out your right out the side of your house. Well, always you'll be well, just. Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you guys this because it may. Actually, it may actually make things 
better. And I'll, I'll so hear me it out. It will in many ways. I well, well, hear me out. I mean, better in a lot of different ways, but maybe even activity. Think about it this way: What's one of the worst pain in the asses about driving to a city to check it out, or driving to a national park or a place to hike, or what's one of the biggest pain in the asses? City parking your car. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, now imagine this. So think I was about that fitness bus. Yeah, but yeah. think think about it this way. Like now, you're like you can go anywhere because it'll just drop you off in the front. Maybe people will actually move more. I know. I love. San you're giving Francisco. humans way too much credit. I, I don't know. You're, you're, I, give, you're giving humans way yeah. too much credit because that still is what people will look at. You know what's happening? The generate and you know we know this because we're in the tech world. That it that's wasted time. That's waste walking in the dirt. Like why why would I walk anywhere? I could push a button and have something come get me and take me there or have it delivered to me. Yeah. That's more hours I could be working and plugging away on the computer. Why should I eat any food? I'll just drink soylent. We're living we live yeah. in this society right now that is they're not looking for any more work. I don't know. Maybe it'll become cool though to start doing some of that stuff. Well, I think there you're will right. be there will well, if we but, had to place our money, let's be honest. you've got the money bet. You've got the, the odds. And and let's sure. and there will be cool kids and there will be yeah. there'll always be a book. Cool. The definition to me about cool is be, is being an outlier, is yeah. being unique, being yourself, and so it will be the people that are like choosing to not be normal yeah. and go do those things. I think they'll they'll be cool people yeah. around that. You for know, sure. what, you know what else will happen from that is you'll you'll start to see because right now, like you see, it's ex- there's expensive property. The closer you get to where there's a lot of work, the property gets more expensive because people commute time, right? But when you have self driving cars, first of all, traffic is dramatically reduced because they all synchronize. Most of traffic is caused from human error. Number two, you can be productive in the car, so you don't have to worry about anything. No. Start, I wonder if it's going to spread people out even more. Because now yeah, oh, I'm like, oh, I'll buy a house further that's, away. That I believe. I oh. believe that, and I and that's some of the positive things that are going to come from it. I think that. I mean, I I think about this right now, being somebody who's who's house shopping is, you know. Right now, the biggest thing that keeps us even close to San Jose is the drive. You have to yeah, is the drive. Is Katrina has got to get up to early in the morning and work. But if we, if this is our future in the next 10, 15, 20 years or whatever, well, then yeah, I, I don't mind being an, I'm sure she doesn't mind being an out. We both spend enough time on computer and email time that that would be a perfect time to do it is while I'm waking up, having my cup of coffee, have my computer in front of me, I'm answering all my emails, taking care of all my like computer type tasks. It's an excellent time. Then I'll actually enjoy the, the commute. Mm-hmm. If I'm not driving and I can be completely mindless. Oh, I would and, love a nice cruise and right, a car. Playing, your, can, playing your favorite podcast, playing your favorite podcast while you work on your computer or uh, your computer or listen to music and chill, whatever. Yeah. So what are we doing like a homeless person gets on the freeway? What do you mean? What? You know what I mean? Like, what do you mean? Like all of a sudden chaos happens oh, the car? in the system. Right, and uh, you're stuck in this car that's supposed to be automated. Yeah, I wonder if they'll block the roads off differently or whatever. That's mm. a good point because that's a conundrum too. Is where does the car? Decide I just feel to like there's always going to be these little interruptions in this perfect utopian, you know, sort of there fluid will, society. There, that, that's going to be people like throwing rocks and breaking. Shut up, dude. There's going to be. Well, we'll see. It'll be it'll be slow and fast at the same time. If that makes sense, right? Mm. It's those are going to be lanes. What I'm, I'm, I'm imagining. What I'm imagining is there'll be a lane dedicated to self-driving vehicles and they're going to start kind of small yeah. right now what it looks like right now is bikes and scooters and shit like that in, in big in urban areas like cities yeah like you see that in san francisco i just love it now because it, it really feels like the wild west still. well you like, see uber what, feels like the wild west still like yeah. the the scooter thing like you know that they're already cracking down like in san francisco because they're just like littering them all over so they're actually repossessing a lot of them and just taking them so, like you know, a lot of times I saw businesses hating on it too, which I thought was so stupid. It's you gotta so, love, you gotta dude, love I, government. But that's so what sometimes I love. you're just like, fuck you. I love man. it's kind of it's a little bit of anarchy, you know. But it's like it's 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 Bro. fun because it lets you Bro. kind of just yeah, freedom. I've I can been, do what I want to do. I've been saying this forever. Technology is the greatest decentralizer of power man has ever seen, and they will you cannot control it. Because these scooters are already fucking everywhere and people already love them. So now yeah. the city's going to have a fight. It's when like, they wanna... a, yeah, it's a race. That's it. Yeah, yeah that's what uh, I love U- it. Uber figured it out, man. They got there and, and, and established themselves way before they could oh, regulate. Yeah. Dude, oh, yeah. that, that scooter thing to me is so brilliant, man. It, on a whole, I mean, it's so cheap. It's <laughs> so cheap that it's like you. I well, would... it just it feels like being a kid. You know what I mean? It's just so like you get on a scooter. What? You get Dude, on a scooter me, me and, and Justin, sidewalk. Me and Justin jumped on those things at least a couple times now, yeah. just for fun. Yeah, just for fun. Oh, I have. I've already used it. I was walking from Luna and I had to be somewhere. I had to go to. I had a haircut with that. And I had to come get back really quick. And I was like, "Fuck, I'm running late." And it was, there was one right there. I had the app on my thing. I hit it. And just <laughs> was jammed yeah. it. I was like, I mean, I just cut my walk. That would have just taken me eight minutes or whatever. Yeah. But it cut down to like one minute. I mean, that was that's just that saved me enough time. I was on time for. 
from my haircut. I was like, oh that God. was cool. Dude, can that I just was say cool that just happened. If we were in like junior high and we had to go to school, walk to school every morning, oh my, oh God. my God. Are you kidding me? Oh, I'd be on We'd be sh- racing. Yeah, every day. Yeah. Someone would die. Someone's going to die. Someone's that'll gonna get, die that'll get in trouble. That's when they'll get in trouble. Yeah. That one for sure. Because yeah. I mean, you're, you're basically like a pedestrian that's yeah. moving quick. Yeah. 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 Surprised they got away with it. Uh. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. Our first question is from K. Kalen. What is the best way to work on hamstring and glute ham tie-in? So the glute ham tie-in, that's a that's a is that a bodybuilder yeah, term? Yeah, that's like a that's like a, a, it's a bikini term. Yeah, it's a stage uh, presentation athlete term. So the ham- Please school me. Yeah, I don't, I don't well, know they, they, about this. We, they, that's where the glutes and the hamstrings meet. Yes. You know, right yeah. under right underneath the butt cheek oh, or whatever. Right, right. And there's and there's there's actually uh, I think we take it and then build a bunch of bro science off of it. But there's some there's a really good point to be made with this. And one is that I think, and I, this has been consistent with almost every bikini, now every bikini competitor that I've coached is uh, always hamstrings and typically shoulders. Always hamstrings, but sometimes shoulders are a major, major focus, even if they have a lagging butt. You can't like overdevelop them almost on a bikini. No, you can't. Yeah. You can't because the, the more developed they become, the more it creates this illusion of this like really curvy, round hamstring that tucks mm-hmm. underneath this glute. And so it'll take a butt that's kind of flat. Kind of folds that butt and, right Yeah, like kind of, or like a, a girl that has a long origin and insertion, so she has a kind of a longer butt. And it'll give her this illusion that she has a more bubbly or round butt. So, you know, I think that some guys uh, try and try and sound smart the way they explain it, and then it just gets bro scienced out. But mm. it, absolutely, there is some some merit to it. And when I would train, it was one of the secret weapons for me as far as training. I knew how to approach it too. Is I would just I, over the course of training them, I would gradually increase volume in those in those areas and to open and start to develop that muscle more than any other muscle we were focusing on their body and it would really pull their backside and since that's where bikini competitors are judged heavily on so it was what will win a show for a bikini competitor is the backside for sure that's where it's won and lost yeah. for it's for i mean it's not a body part you know the tie-in isn't a body part it's literally the top of your it's a term. No, it's, yeah. it's a term it's a body yeah. and the bottom of your glute of, yeah right yeah i mean here's that the thing. junction yeah here's the thing there's techniques you can definitely do to develop to, to put more focus on a muscle the obvious answer you know first thing you do is you just put more focus on it and you do more work for that what was area. the question again read, read the question again Doug. sorry yeah what's the best way to work on hamstrings and the glute ham tie-in so okay. i think they have underdeveloped hamstrings okay so uh place more focus on it of course but what's what may be happening is you have a poor connection to it and it's not firing the way you want um and one of the best ways to get more connected to a muscle is isolation movements uh mm-hmm. compound movements in this particular situation you know if i have a weak activation of my lats or my rhomboids or my my quads or any other muscle that is commonly used in like these big full gross motor type movements and I have a weak connection to it I can do all the squats I want if I have a bad you know quad you know if I, if I'm not getting good activation of my quads which is rare but if that's the case they're not going to develop that much and I'll get the other muscles that are involved so isolation movements this is where I would recommend uh, you know, hamstring curls and where you really focus on the squeeze at the top of the curl, really connect to the shortened part of that motion. Um, I think pre-exhaust supersets would be great in this, in this case. So if you like to do lots of lunges and, uh, and, and, and squats and, uh, you know, hip thrusts, but you want to really develop your hamstrings, do a superset where you do hamstring curls first where you really pre-exhaust the hamstrings and then go to the compound. So movement, it's funny right? that you went this way because so I've had you a, actually feel it. In the I've had lifts. a couple girls that I've coached uh, that had a really, really bad connection to their posterior chain. They just, just always quad squatted, yeah. um, didn't have much glute development, didn't have much hamstrings, and their entire routine with me every single time they squatted, we were always pre-exhausting with either hamstring or glute exercises, yep. whether it be bridges or glute kickbacks or doing things to target the glute meat specifically and then going in there and hitting squats 
the entire routine. So all of that was that just because I wanted them to get connected there first before they did, which we, we know that squatting could be one of the best things to do to build the hamstring yep. glute tie in, but a lot of people are not activating it properly. Yeah, yeah. And this is, this is all that this is bodybuilding wisdom. I mean, bodybuilding has brought us a lot of wisdom with exercise and resistance training and, you know, so a lot of bad wisdom, but a lot of good wisdom too. And some of the good stuff is, is this, like, if you want to if you want to study a sport or a resistance training modality that knows how to activate muscle individual muscle groups you can't beat bodybuilding you just you simply can't they're really fucking good at feeling and connecting to a muscle and this is why isolation movements tend to be popular in bodybuilding or at least why you see them look if you compare a bodybuilding routine to any other type of resistance training routine and i'm talking about a good bodybuilding routine like one we would design right you're going to see way more isolation movements in the bodybuilding routine in comparison to the other routines because part of bodybuilding is targeting areas and sculpting and building that specific area to create this illusion. Right. And if you're if you're a chick and you just want to squat really good, well, you don't give a shit if your hamstrings don't look, don't have that aesthetic appeal or balance that you want because you're just right. you're just trying to get yeah. good at squatting. But if you're building your body because you want to change how it looks. And your hamstrings aren't developing. No, of course, there's a method and a way to do that. Yeah, That's, yeah you got to get connected. Advantageous. You got to get connected to it. Uh, uh, what's his name? Ben Pakolsky. There were two things he said when we were when we podcasted with him last time that was really cool. And one of the things he said was, a weak body part, aesthetically speaking, an underdeveloped body part, almost always has a poor connection in its shortened position. Mm -hmm. So let me I'll put that in more layman's terms. When muscles contract, they, they shorten. They pull two points together. So when I flex my bicep, I'm shortening my bicep. I'm taking it from a long position to a short position. If I had poor connection to my bicep, the, the point of that connection where I'll feel it the weakest is at the shortened part. So if your hamstrings, you're having trouble connecting to them or your glutes, focus on connecting to the shortened part of it. So with a hamstring, that would be like a leg curl at the top. For the glutes, it would be the very top of a hip thrust. Mm. And, and one, one way you can connect to the glutes in a hip thrust is get up to the top of a hip thrust so your, your hips are up. But then when you're up there, go into a posterior pelvic tilt. In other words, uh, tuck your tailbone. So rather than sticking your butt out, kind of tuck it and squeeze your glutes at the top. Hold that squeeze at the top really fucking hard for like five to ten seconds for every single rep before you do any other leg exercise. And then you'll feel the glutes fire. Like nothing else. This is why it's almost always been a game changer too when I take somebody who's trying to develop their calves and they do the short pumping ranges while getting them to do full range of motion of yeah. like calves and freeze the top and really concentrate at the top and then bring all the way down and concentrate the top develops their calves like crazy. Yep. Cut the weight, a quarter of the weight, what they were doing before where they're just kind of bouncing it in this little weird little range all the time, which you see all the time, guys getting on oh, seated, yeah. seated calf raises and they're they're going through this little tiny, you little know, choppy movement. Yeah, choppy movement with five plates on their rocking. You take that same person, you put one plate on that thing and then you <laughs> have them go all the way to the top and squeeze the top and then come back down. A lot of them can't even get to the very top right. with a little bit of weight. Exactly. Yeah, and and, that. and that's, a, you know, speaks to what Ben's point was. I 100% agree with that. Is just is getting it in that weak point. It's also why I love uh, training the pec deck and then doing an alternate fly where I keep one squeezed and concent and concentrating squeeze while I open up the yeah, opposite yeah, yeah. and I alternate back and forth. It's been one of those great exercises to help not develop yeah, the chest because it's not going to outperform a incline press, but get me better connected to my chest. So the incline press, well, you get better exact. connected, you get stronger too. Right. Yeah, and those those ranges, which you know, that's the same thing on a performance end. It's like you see. You know, people that are performing things in a shortened range of motion. Whereas, if we can elongate that process, get more of that connectivity, get that response. Own the whole movement. And yeah, the whole movement, the entire length of the contraction. It's 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 a game changer. Yeah. So, and then here's the other part of this: is uh, frequency, training frequency. So, can you work a body part every day? Yep. And I I don't think you can work every body part every day. Well, you could if you really adjusted the intensity. But if there's a particular body part that you want to develop. Work that body part every single day. Now, adjust your intensity. That means that you're probably going to have three, you know, between two to four, I would say, depending on if you're a beginner or if you're advanced, two to four harder workouts a week. But then every other day you work out as well. You just go in there and get a good pump and focus on the squeeze like we're talking. Right. You can definitely – I did this early on when I first started lifting weights. So when I first started working out as a kid, the, the body part I was most self-conscious over – were my shoulders. I had, because I was narrow, I don't have a wide bone structure and people would poke fun at me. So 
the one body part I worked every single day were my delts. And I did side laterals and front laterals and rear laterals. And my delts now as one of my strongest body parts. And they just responded as a result of that. And you could do that with any body well, part. Well, I just want to point out too that I know that we just completely answered this question and stuff like that. But this is exactly why and how MAPS Black is designed and built. Mm-hmm. It's designed to pick mm-hmm. one to two muscles and that you need to focus on because they're lagging. So hamstring and glute would be this girl who's asking this question yeah. right now. Those you would, would be your focus on the butt builders. Yeah, you would implement yeah, that. You would yeah. implement that into the program. That's what's cool about the program is it's customizable based off of what your lagging body parts are. That's how we designed it. That's what's so cool about it is if you're somebody who is chasing any sort of aesthetics and you want to develop a specific part of your body that you think is lagging in comparison to the rest, that program was written for that to teach you Mm -hmm. how does somebody program that and do that effectively so that they actually see tangible results in their body over the course of three or four to three, two to three months. And I've I've thought of this oftentimes because all all the programs change your body. All of them get you more fit. All of them get you look better. But MAPS aesthetic is different in the sense that you have the control – in terms of, imagine if you have a little avatar of yourself on a computer and you can change individual body parts so you can make it look a particular way. You wouldn't just necessarily develop every body part, especially if you're out of balance. You would develop the parts that were weaker in comparison to the others a little more so you have this symmetrical aesthetic. That's where aesthetics come from, from that balance. And MAPS Aesthetic gives you more of that control than other programs because you pick for yourself specifically what you want to work on. And in this particular case right here, I would pick glutes and hamstrings, but I would also remember to connect to the muscle, get in that shortened position. And I, here's what's going to happen. I guarantee you this is what's going to happen to you. You're going to get in the shortened position, and you're going to be like, I don't know if I feel my glutes. I, I'm trying to feel my glutes. I can't feel my glutes. And that'll mm-hmm. be your, that'll, that's how you'll know, oh, shit, my connection isn't that good. Right. So focus on the shortened part of, the, uh, uh, of the, the rep or the part where you're most contracted and then try to connect and squeeze to that and do that at the beginning of your workout. Bro, I can't believe that Justin let you use his fucking Star Wars shaker cup that oh, he just thanks, got, bro. dude. <laughs> dude, I, can't I you, just got that. I can't believe you didn't say anything here. to him. This guy just helps himself to it. Well, yeah. you know what? He, 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 I, well, I've, been, I've been giving him Organifi protein. He brought the Organifi <laughs> protein. Justin ain't drinking either. that, is he? Is he drinking that? Everybody. Yeah, I get on it, but not as... I mean, you're the one that brought it, so... Yeah. so. Uh, no, you know, it's... Uh, it's it's the product I use the least out of all of theirs right now. Yeah, do you use it? Because you used to use the vegan and I, I didn't mind the taste of it at all. But, oh, it's but the it's, best vegan protein I've ever had. It's, you far. can definitely tell it's different than whey, for yeah, sure. No, no, it, it's it's the best yeah. tasting vegan. I mean, vegan proteins are normally disgusting, but I, 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 how often do I use it? Um, not super often because uh, my, my diet's usually pretty good, but I bring, I'll bring i bring it sometimes oh, well, on our Oh, we're traveling because we miss yeah. meals yeah. so much. And lately, my training has been really, really, really hard. and yeah, I've you've just, been getting after it. I've just recognized, recognized that my protein requirements, if I want to maintain this level of training, are a little bit higher, and so we're working all day long. Yeah. And so I'll throw in one of these shakes. I'd say every day or every other day. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, you know, I have digestive issues and gut issues, and it's it's like good. It feels fine. No, it's it's definitely the best vegan protein that I've ever yeah. had. You know, it's for yeah. sure. But it's the, the one thing I've been taking consistently it's easier on my stomach for yeah. sure. No, the one thing I've been taking a lot of lately. I've, I've been telling you guys this is probably the third episode where I mentioned the tu- the turmeric that I've been taking consistently now because I've noticed uh, just a. A mark, uh, just a huge benefit in my inflammation. I, I have ever it. since you said something, so I have been. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you my feedback cool. after I've been doing See it for if it a while. Affects your Achilles or whatever. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's, it's helping with inflammation for sure. You know, I definitely cool. noticed that, but it's still early on for me to see before I get like too excited. Cool. Next question is from JWP two zero one four. What is the optimal time for someone to get on gear? I've heard to stay natural for as long as possible. For example, not starting in your early twenties. Is this true? Will it affect your T levels more later down the road if you start sooner, or does it not matter? Mm. Oh, it matters. For so sure. I've I've heard the case. I've heard people make the case for gear, doing for it younger, younger I, or I've older. Heard, I've heard both. Really, yeah. you've heard it for younger? Yeah, yes. I've, I've heard I've both. I've never heard that argument. So, so at risk of in, of encouraging people to get on gear, I, first off, after you hear what I'm about to say, wait until we're done with this conversation because there's a lot more to this. Than what I'm about to say, but the mm. argument for going on gear in your late teens, early twenties, and whatever is that when you're at them at those ages, when you're building this huge foundation, it, it could place you in a situation where you have more muscle hyperplasia. It could encourage hyperplasia of muscle fiber cells. Mm. So, so muscle fibers, the way they grow is through hypertrophy, where they they themselves enlarge, but muscles muscle fibers may actually also 
split and turn into new muscle fibers. Now, how how you know, and I know this happens. We've we've studied this. We've seen this. But how common would you think that is? Isn't wouldn't wouldn't you say that that's something that rarely happens? And there's that is not. Very, a, no, I think I think it happens. I think. It, oh, you think it's a more common thing? Yeah, I think okay. it, I think it happens. I think it, but I think hypertrophy happens faster. I mean, I feel like I've experienced it, but I've also yeah. taken testosterone, and I've because I I know that like where if I where I'm at training dieting wise or that in the past I would shrink down to a certain size where now you hold on to more yeah now I hold on to more well, muscle mass let's talk to. about the accelerated detriments at that point if you start that early was is, is there more likelihood that oh yeah I'll get there for sure okay, oh, yeah, okay. No, I'm gonna get right, there for right, sure right, yeah. yeah no but what happens Justin's like god damn, Sal, you're making <laughs> don't be want. selling this yeah. shit <laughs> no yeah. no because what what so hyperplasia muscle fibers split turn into new muscle fibers and then if you ever stop working out you don't lose those extra muscle fibers, right? So yeah. that may be one of the potential benefits. What are the negatives? Well, you're exposing yourself to high androgen levels for long periods of time during your youth, so your risk of of issues with that are much higher. And here's the thing that I think for sure, if you want to fuck up your testosterone levels for for forever, do them for a while when you're young because yeah. that almost always That's what seems I think. to be the case. Yeah. Yeah. And that sucks. Let me tell you something right now. If you're a kid and you're listening right now and you're thinking like, I don't give a fuck. I'll be on testosterone for the rest of my life. Really? You really want to inject yourself every week for the rest of your life? Yeah. Just you want to, to travel with, You want to travel with syringes and fucking vials of, of, of a hormone? Yeah. You want to fucking... And by the way, testosterone, when you take testosterone, it's not ideal because testosterone in the natural body naturally fluctuates. Yeah. When you take testosterone, even if you take replacement doses, uh, doses, you may have to deal with side effects like gynecomastia. You may have to deal with you know prostate enlargement, which you may not have dealt with if you had normal fluctuating testosterone levels you deal with changes in the brain and all kinds of i mean you're you're remember hormones are are signals telling the body to do something and if you you take testosterone in your early 20s and you take them for four or five years i don't know man i don't know very many people who did that who aren't now somehow screwed a little bit with their hormones Mm -hmm. most people are yeah but i think a lot of that is because of the psychological piece right i think a lot of people turn that direction and then end up getting addicted to you know, which is funny too, because I think there's as much addiction in steroids as there is in any other any other drug out there. Even though we've proven, how can that, you not get addicted yeah, to that? But yeah. we, what's crazy is that the you know we've we said it's okay because we there's no addictive properties to the actual chemical itself. I think but, there is. You well, know what's funny? I know they say that, and I've, I've I've echoed that. But here's the deal: Do you get withdrawal from going off testosterone? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your 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 body stopped making testosterone, so you go off. Now you're in the super low, low testosterone late, you know state. That's a, a type of withdrawal, I would say. Maybe oh. not the same as like when you go off heroin or whatever, but it just, did, how did it feel going it's off? It's a strong from, response. You know, right? Somebody who's experienced both, I think I, I think you very much so can relate the two of them. They're different, but they definitely both feel fucking miserable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the testosterone one is just it's worse because it lasts longer. How long does it take to get off of uh, you know? Well, when I, when I, when I was taking Vicodin and I came off pills, I mean that took it took a while to wing wing off completely, you know. So just like the with testosterone, so it's it's not a quick process. It's not like oh you just stop taking it and then because the body go. I mean opiates are produced in your body, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So naturally, and that gets shut down completely. That's the, that's responsible for happiness and joy yeah, and uplifting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so imagine that being shut down completely in, inside of you. I mean, that's awful, right? Mm-hmm. So they both they both have their and then with testosterone, I mean, that's that's your sex drive. That's your that's your driver for your libido and stuff like that. And we all know how important that is to health yeah. and wellness and, and energy and confidence. Yeah, and stuff, yeah, yeah. So I mean, they're they're equally awful to yeah. to have and then to be to be to be done with but I don't know man I look at it like this like if you're a, if you're in your 20s and you're you're a dude in your 20s and you really want to change your physique and you want to change cuz this is what motivates you to take steroids let's be honest if you're if you're a kid in your 20s you want to take steroids you're not doing it because you have a passion <laughs> for fitness and health. You're doing no, it because you're trying to get laid. Yeah, you want to look I mean, good. Let's be honest. Yeah, you want to look good. You want to build muscle. You're probably insecure. That, now, on that point, this is the reason why, because it's really hard for me to answer that question when I'm somebody who has, right? Mm-hmm. Is I tell them, do yourself this favor. Put yourself in the most amazing shape you could ever possibly That's do exactly in your life naturally. Do that first. I think you'd be. I think they'd yeah. be surprised. They are. They always are. That's the thing. And what they're looking for, what most people are when they're asking that question, is they're looking for the shortcut. Yeah. And so you, you, what you need to do is you need to say, okay, I need to prove to myself that because what doesn't change here, what what steroids does do is it does it allows people to get away with with 
poor dieting and poor programming. More so than not. Yeah, right? more so. Because yeah. you, you could still, it's still not magic. You could, yeah, they're still not magical yeah, and yeah. you could still get pretty, and that's where people are disappointed is because they definitely get on, they feel it, their body, they get in the best shape of their life, but it's still not the shape they thought they were going to get in mm -hmm. and that's because they're still missing the programming, the nutrition piece down. Yeah. They don't have and, that Or dial. their training is even shitty. That's what I mean, their programming. Their programming shit or I've, their nutrition I've known is shit. More people, I've known more people get on gear and look like shit than people who got on gear and looked amazing. Yeah, oh, more. I, I do too. Yeah. More. I do too. I had a friend, you know, when I was down in Palm Springs uh, or Palm Desert, I had it, you know, uh, when I worked down there years ago, so I was 21, a friend of mine who worked for me he was on more gear than uh, he was probably taking close to what like a competitive bodybuilder was taking. No joke, because there was Mexico was right there. They'd go down to Mexico. They'd travel down there. They'd buy all this, this testosterone and anadrol and D ball. And this guy was taking grams of stuff a week. His training was shit, and his diet was shit. And he looked terrible. He did not look good. And he kept thinking. This gear is you know, not working or whatever. And no, it's the same gear that this other guy over here took who's on good diet and knows what he's doing. He looks totally different. And yeah. all he did was lose his hair and get gyno as a result from it. And did he get bigger? Yeah, but he looked like a big puffy. Yeah. Like it did not look good. Well, that's what's at all. more common. And so yeah. I think that's why it's that's important that you tell you teach yourself. Because if you can't get in your in the best shape of your life naturally, you won't get in the best shape that you think you, you're going to get from testosterone. No. 100%, if you inject synthetic testosterone in you, you'll see your bench go up, you'll see your squat go up, you'll be thicker, you'll fill out your shirts more. Absolutely, all those things. You're going to start holding a bunch of water, retaining all that shit. You're going to be eating more because your, your metabolism is getting kicked up. So you're going to see a difference from it. But the moment you get off, you'll lose all of that shit because it was all artificially induced. You got away with, got away with a lot of shit that you couldn't get away with. And so then you're back to either... Now you have to make the decision. I'm going to have to be on steroids forever just to look like look like this a little bit better than average mm -hmm. guy. Or I need to do some work on really learning about how to program and how to train my body correctly, how to eat correctly to do that. So prove to yourself that first, and then and then and then ask why. Why do you want to do it? Because now you've gotten yourself in the best shape of your life naturally. And at that point, you still are thinking, "Hey, I want to be a, a I want to go pro and be a bodybuilder one day." Who am I to say? Yeah, it's your body, right? It's hey, your body, hey, and absolutely, if you want to hey, be a pro bodybuilder one day, you're going to have to take and fucking animals. Here's one of the biggest problems with steroids: is that when you take them, you never really learn what really works for your body, mm -hmm. because you the, the steroids tend to do some of the work for you and you get away with a lot. And so, I know a lot of guys who they'll they'll be on gear, they'll work out, they'll respond, they'll go off gear. And they're not getting good results. And then what I'll do is I'll change their workout routine, change their programming, and then their body stops, starts responding again, even though they're not on, on the gear. And it's because they never really learned what worked for their body. They never really understood how to apply frequency properly or intensity properly because all they know is their body, how it responds at the, with these high testosterone levels. Here's the other thing too, okay? I think a male in their 20s is a terrible time to take anabolics because that is a horrible time to just blow up your ego. You're already a fucking egomaniac. You've already got all this testosterone. You think you're yeah. the shit anyway. I don't need sleep. I could drink. I could fucking do whatever I want. You're gonna throw some gasoline on that fire. Yeah. You're gonna. You're gonna. It's gonna, that's a good point. And I'll tell you something. Hey, hey, think about all the dudes we knew in their twenties doing gear. Yeah. What did it do to them? It just turned them into bigger fucking egomaniacs. Gorillas. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. that's where you get the stereotype of it. So yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't recommend it. If I think if you did everything right naturally. I think most people, there's definitely people out there who've just got terrible, you know, their bodies don't respond, but it's less than you think. Most people, we'd be shocked. You'd be shocked mm. if you got just a six pack, because if you get lean, you're going to get a six pack, yeah. a little bit of muscle definition. You don't need to get that, that big. Take your shirt off at a fucking party and see what happens. Right. You'll get plenty of attention. You don't need to take any, any you know, illegal anabolic steroids. Right. And plus, you'll now have the tools that if you really are going to do this crazy and serious and get into steroids and do all that stuff like that, that you're going to end up looking mm -hmm. the way that you were wanting you to look like and it. why you started taking that. Because you probably started taking it because you wanted to look like somebody on the cover of a magazine. You're not going to get awesome right away from it. There's no, there's no magic oh, pill. No, 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 and no. It's the same thing with sports, too. Like, you know, a lot of guys that I found out later were on steroids, like that were, you know, on the bench. And it's like, you're still on the fucking bench. You know, <laughs> yeah. you haven't learned the skills and the hard work and the discipline. And, you know, the practice and the time it takes to be good, to be great, you know, all that. And well, it's and like, I, you have to put in real work. It doesn't matter. That's just, that. obviously, that's an advantage. But not only when you're 
are good already. Yeah. Well, you got to really ask yourself too, like how knowledgeable you are in those areas. Cause I'll tell you right now, I thought I was, I mean, yeah. I was a trainer when I started to, I was in my, I was what, 22, 23 ish when they took my first cycle. And, oh, right. and at that time I didn't, I You're didn't, not a fucking chemist. Yeah. Dude. I, and at that time I'm, you know, already through three years of personal training. I've got multiple national certifications, train lots of clients. So I think I'm pretty knowledgeable when it comes to programming and eating correctly. So I, even in my head, I thought that I was ready for steroids or I, I'm going to take that. And that's what was, because at that time in my life, I really believed that that was the difference between me looking the way I looked and then me getting to the magazine. I just assumed that all those guys have to yeah. be. They yeah. have, they've got to be on steroids to look like that. Everyone tells me that. I hear that. I, that's where it's, it's got to be. And that's why I don't look that way because I already train hard. I already eat good. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm missing is that. And then when I took it and then realized, oh, shit, that wasn't it the wasn't answer. It. Yeah. it wasn't the answer at well, all. Well, the good thing about that was you didn't do what a lot of guys do is they think, oh, I'm just not taking enough. Right. Because oh, yeah. that's what ends up happening. Yeah. A lot of guys, well, I guess I'm not taking enough. I need to keep taking more. And let's also talk about this for a second. If you're going to get on anabolics, you're going to get them from the black market. The black market, yeah. you don't know where it's coming from. There's a lot of issues associated with anabolics that aren't necessarily even with the steroids, like scar tissue in your body. People can get abscesses. You got to buy syringes. You got to deal with all that bullshit. Like, I don't know. I mean, weigh it all out. Be smart about it. And if you want to do it, it's definitely your body. But I have, I have yet to see anybody do this do it in their 20s and later on say, well, it's probably, I probably would have been better off had I not done that. You know? Yeah, right. Next question is from Vincent Trong. What are your speculations on the human lifespan if all aspects of human health and wellness are optimized? That's, That's a very interesting question. It dude. is yeah. because... Do you believe that we have the capability to live like 165? I think with technology, we may hmm. be able to. I don't think naturally. Now, I think if you're really, really healthy... Because there's some science on this, and it's obviously, and you can't be exact with well, this. like accelerated regeneration of cells and that kind of thing, like where we start to learn that part. You like, know, I don't. So I think there's a time limit on the human body, yeah. right? Natural time limit. Um, well, that's what we were talking about last night with Mike when we were all hanging out. Yeah, was yeah. that you know some people believe that there's this there's only so many breaths, yeah, so many breaths and so many heartbeats that yeah. you'll have in a lifetime. Yeah. So I, I think there's this de definitely this natural time limit. I think. Um, you know, a lot of times we don't reach that time limit because we die from, you know, not taking care of ourselves or whatever, but science is pretty, the, the studies have been done and they've shown that if you take care of yourself, if you're fit and healthy and all that stuff, you'll live 10 years longer than your genetics have determined that you'd live. So if you were supposed to live till you were 80, if you know, 80 is your, your, it, you know, maybe you can live, make it to 90 or something like that. There's a, there's a definitely a genetic component for people who make it to a hundred and older. And, uh, and that's, you know, that's partially genetic and that's partially lifestyle, but I don't know. Let me ask you guys, the, the better question is that, cause I think technology is going to come out with ways of slowing down the aging process of replacing your organs and doing mm -hmm. all that stuff. But let me ask you a question. How long would you want to live? I would love to live as long as we could. What if that's 500 years? I yeah. would do it. I would be down. I like, would life. you download your con I, I, consciousness? I, I would. You would? I think, I, I, I think, I think I would. I, I, here's the thing, dude. I, just I think, think the Adam right now thinks it's a good idea. Maybe. You have no idea oh, of what course. That. Yeah. Maybe when I'm 90, you might, but then I'll just, I'll, then I'll stop trying then to stay alive, I yeah. guess at that point. I mean, I think, mm -hmm. I think we have, uh, I think we have so much, um, in this life. I think that it's constantly evolving and changing. Look at in our yeah. short, almost 40 years of our life, what we've seen and changed and how cool that has mm -hmm. been to watch that change. I don't think that'll ever, I don't think that will ever change. I think as we're getting ready to go out, I hope that I'm that 80 or 90 or hundred year old who is still, you know, up on up what's coming and what's happening with the world and stuff like that. I think I will. I think that's neat. I think mm -hmm. I, I think I'll want to live and be a part of as many generations as I possibly can. If I can take I, care of myself. I, I don't know if I, the only thing I can judge it based off of is, is how my 15 year old self or my 20 year old self would, would answer how I thought my 39 year old self would be or what I would like or what I'd want to do. And I'd be off. I'd be way off. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. I think now it sounds awesome, but humans have, I mean, we've never lived these yeah. super crazy long lives. Our, it just depends our, on how cynical you are. I mean, do you, I mean, I could also, I could see us being on a rocking chair at 90 years old too, just shaking our head being like, yeah. Oh, it's, I'm so set up with the rest of the world because they're all young minded and they have Maybe. so much to grow and learn. And like, I'm out of here. Like I could see Maybe. that. Too. I don't see, but nineties, even within, within like you could live to a thousand. Yeah. Like, like what if you made it to like 500, 600? Like? Well, yeah. Like, like how, how much that might fuck up your psychology because 
because we've never done that before. Right. It, nobody knows the answer. Yeah, but yeah, but it's not gonna. We're not gonna go from where we're at right now to all of a sudden five hundred. We're gonna watch this number creep up over time. Mm. I think we're gonna start seeing. You know the one twenties. Because what's it at now? Seventy nine. Well, it depends on if the quality matches. You know, well, just it, elongated it'll be, life, it'll, right? It'll, it'll 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 naturally move with it. It'll be a moving graph, right? So yeah. well, if, if you're we if you maintain youth for, if, for if that long, right now the average person only lives to what at seventy something or whatever. I, don't I think know. it's seventy nine in the U.S. I believe it. Is. I don't know what 79, it is. Seventy nine. So so say seventy nine. So once that moves up to you know ninety nine. The people that are living in their 70s now will be living a better quality life because that's the only way you sure, can in sure, order sure. to live 90. So sure. it'll all naturally go up, which I think is all great. Yeah. And I think it'll be great to be at that age where I think you'll the same thought process when we're probably 100 and you know 120 see, is a possibility. We might be ready. But see, to- here's the deal. You are a growth-minded individual. So am I. Mm. So if I'm going to live to 150 – I'm probably going to go back to school at some point or right, have right, different yeah. careers. How crazy but, is that? But, different but, things. But a lot of people a lot of people are like I'm 70, I want to retire and not work anymore. Why do I have to work or I'm bored? Yeah, but I think I think uh, no, that's I think that's also a problem with our culture right now. Yeah. Is that exact thought process is that uh, we're all working towards this retirement thing. We're all working towards the wrong thing. When in reality, when we have already the studies in front of us to prove that as soon as you retire, like the death rate starts to increase like dramatically because you lost your purpose yeah. in life. And you only lost your purpose in life because you had the wrong purpose the yes. entire time. Yes. You were following the wrong path for 60 years and you finally retire and realize, holy shit, I was following the wrong thing. And now yeah. now, 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 death is knocking at your door. Yeah, well, I yeah. just feel like, like we're, I think we're going to approach work we differently. Keep, we keep finding like how perishable we are, Like no matter what we try to do as far as our, our like organic body is concerned. That's why I keep thinking like you know this virtual reality thing where I'm like immersing myself uh, just in my own mind, I'm constructing this environment, like how that's going to become a thing yeah. even more without the need of the body being awesome anymore. Yeah, I think the average person, if I'm not mistaken, if they take care of themselves and their health and they do really well, I think the average person should be able to make it to, and I've, I, I can't remember where I read this, but it was like 90, was right, right? Like they don't get any accidents, they don't have any major genetic issues, they should make it till about 90. Um, but yeah, it poses a lot of different questions living a long time. And I mean, are people going to want to change that much? Get married. Yeah. I mean, for a thousand years. Who exactly? Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many lifetimes would you like, you know, how many normal lifetimes would you like to be? Hey, I for? said this like the four, I, know, four, I, four, this. I said this like four or 500 episodes ago uh, and you watch the future. You're gonna talking about up. the lease. Yes. Agreement? Everybody. Right. Uh, marriage shouldn't be the way marriage every is 10 right years, now. You got to yes. yeah, go, go check in. I don't Co-sign. see why. And that, I, I don't know. And I know some people get all butthurt when I said that, but I mean, it's like, it doesn't even conflict with like people's religious beliefs. I mean, yeah. you could just say, Hey, I'm going to be married to this person. And I mean, people are already, I mean, well, you made it into a law anyway, by bringing the guy. Right, so. right. So I think we we owe it to each other that every five years we look at each other and have that honest conversation. Like Fuck, five years, hey, that's short. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's really not though. You know how many people we get divorced? I, what uh, is it? You know what? What's the divorce rate b- within the first five years? I bet it's the that's, highest that's within the highest. first five years. Yeah, 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 that's why I threw a number out like that yeah. because it's it's early on. It's not. If you made it ten years, most people are like sticking with the motherfucker. It's a, it's a contract that automatically uh, terminates unless years. you unless you react. Yes, to it. exactly. You should have it defaults to divorce. And that's what I, that's what I mean. Wife. That's what I mean by it. Is that we're coming up in our ten year uh, <laughs> renewal? Yeah, uh, fair check the oil. You might want to restructure it too, right? And you know, how many marriages would that save? Right? You have that conversation, yeah. like, hey, our, I need some training hey, you know it. what? Our our marriage license is up up uh, in a month. You want to go down this week? Like, well, you know, stop saying that, dude. You know what? You're selling that, and the, the government will jump on that because then you got to pay to relicense all the time. It's what a great good. way for them to be. It's good to happen. <laughs> you got to pay your, your marriage renewal fee. Yeah, you know what I mean? You want to stay married? And you, you can. And if you opt out, it's cheaper. Oh, if you break contracts in between, it's more expensive. And worse and more damaging for you. I, th- I just think it makes more and more sense I don't, to me. I don't know, man. And I, and, I, and, I, and people that are already married and been married for twenty years, like why would that? Why would yeah. you be so anti that? Like just because if you're truly in love yeah. and you want that partner for the rest of your life, why is it such a big deal every five yeah. years to say like fuck it, it's yeah? It's a let's little keep... bit of accountability, right? It's just like right. oh, do I have my shit together? Like yes. oh, am I scrambling for papers? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll, t- I'll tell you like, what. Tonight, did I go to the gym? This means it's a hell of fuck. <laughs> right? I'll tell you what. She's though, gonna man. come at me for this. I don't know about you guys, but I've, I'm I've I'm thoroughly enjoying, you know, getting older. I'm not old, right? But I thoroughly enjoy getting older. And I don't, 
I don't dread any of it. Like I don't look forward and think, oh man, I don't oh, want to turn. Dude, f- being finite, I mean, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. That's why it's like it's it's tough to be like, I want to live forever. Yeah. You know, it's just like actually that's a that's a you just that's a brilliant point. Like, think about it. How much value does something have when you can have as much of it as you want? Not a lot. Right. How much value does your life have when you know it's gonna end versus oh, I'll just live forever? Oh uh, yeah. That might actually encourage see, that's the psychological part I'm talking about. Like yeah. humans have never lived fucking super well, long. And lives. that's why I say uh, the, the, I'm envisioning because in our lifetime I don't think we're uh, for sure I don't think we're going to find five be able to live 500 years. I think it's possible in our lifetime that we may figure out the technology to push 120, 130, yeah. 150. So I'm not thinking like that. That's a whole different I have a whole different answer for you if you say what if you never died well that'd be yeah. a different situation because you're right because then, it, vampire. Cause it's, then it isn't a big deal but <laughs> absolutely could i squeeze out if if i had the opportunity to squeeze out 20 more years fuck yeah <laughs> fuck yeah by making better choices well, or Moses possibly lived a thousand or doing years, what, so. what ben greenfield does by sticking coffee up my ass like i mean if that could, <laughs> if, if i find out that squeezes 10 if more that years works, like, i'm definitely right, gonna put that on facebook right live. right yeah. if, if Vinny lives 10 more years than me because of that i mean i'm gonna be upset why that coffee it, you know, here's the thing. I don't know anything about the coffee enemas that I see a lot of these guys doing. Yeah, what's but the deal with that? But why coffee? Who, who's the one that looked at coffee and was like, you know what? We're going to ask Ben. Like, it, it's a brown fluid. And we're, <laughs> hanging, we're hanging out <laughs> with Ben on, sense. on Monday, and that is for sure I want to talk to him about We've got to dive deep into that. Yeah, no, we're, all about I do the not coffee. want him to do yeah. it, though. Yeah, because okay. I feel don't like... encourage him. I want coffee enemas that he's doing and his dick stem cell thing I want to get into because right. we yeah, haven't gotten into that stuff with him. Nothing Dick sticking and and I really believe this and I, we have a lot of dick and large. We haven't gone yeah. deep on this Things conversation with butt. Ben, and I'd like to make the commitment of doing that because he does strike me as somebody who is he's so neurotic about all that stuff that there could be like this deeper thing of fear of death and wanting to live forever. Oh, yeah. all, the, all those biohackers are. All yeah. those biohackers are afraid of death. Right. Well, we've never pushed Ben there a little bit. I kind of want to push him there a little bit. Ooh, we haven't done... He's kind of religious though. Isn't he religious too? Yeah, I think yeah. he's religious. So he's, I think he looks... He's, yeah, he's he fireproof. What is that? What is that? What does he's that fireproof. mean? He's fireproof. Yeah. Why does that change anything? Well, I don't know. Maybe he's, he thinks it's a great... You know, it's... I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I just want to ask about the coffee in his butt. And it, it makes me... I'll tell you what. We were in the car earlier, and you guys were talking about how coffee makes you guys poop in the morning. Yeah. Imagine if it goes straight up into that area. What? Is that like instant, like, poo-poo? Whoa. Yeah. It's definitely instant. Ass Insta blown. <laughs> <laughs> we will go there. <laughs> hey, what was the original question? How did we get here? I don't know. Oh, 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 Vince. You know what, Vince? That, that was a good question, Vince. I, I knew that would take everybody off, yeah. on, off the... Tr- <laughs> that should definitely be a new thing. Ass like, blown. Ass blown. It's just like an emoji. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit next question Doug oh wow alright our next question is from Johnny Dumbbells hey hey, hey. Johnny Dumbbells hey. Hey. <laughs> how much money would it take for you guys Back to sell donuts. out what wait hold on repeat that sorry just how much you- money would it take for you guys to sell out <laughs> <laughs> So, so, yeah, so you, you, he should have. Is this an offer? Or yeah, what? you should have put though in there because I know like everyone's going to opt out of that, right? I think you should have put like you have yeah, to sell yeah. out, like yeah. you have like, to sell who out. You, who are you, Satan? I'm yeah. going to make I'm going to make yeah. Adam and Justin very happy by saying something that's going to make you guys laugh your ass off. But man cannot live on bread alone, right? That saying, what does that mean, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew you guys would love that. So uh, no, so you know, I was watching a talk. Uh, uh, who was it? Uh, teach, and they were and they were breaking that down. And what that Sunday what school the, lessons? <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude, that's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, so you know what that's what that actually means is that actually means that you can't you can't like money like you can't live on just money alone. So when you you sell yourself out, like what use is that money going to be? I mean, you have all the money in the world, but if you're not, well, I could argue that you could take that and do something else with it. I mean. Yeah, but if you truly sell yourself out, well, okay, so yeah, now if you get that deep on it, I think he's looking for a number. Like if someone came in and said, "All right, Sal, you're going to be pushing supplements, and we know these supplements don't give people yeah. much results, but we're going to because Mind Pump has well, so much in, look like so much influence. Yeah, yeah. Here's the dollar amount. What's your what's your number to sell your soul? Yeah, mm. yeah. Well, I mean, what's the terms? You know what I mean? Like, it always well, uh, that's matters a, to me. You, you it's know? your terms. Come up with it. Like, what yeah, would, like, what would it, what, what would it, selling out be? I could for tell you, you this. Guys? I so, is you. It you, okay, here's the question so Are you just damaging your own reputation? Right. Or are you hurting people and ripping people off? There's oh, a big difference. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, Ooh, well, let's take the, the easiest selling out because you, we could be considered sellouts. 
uh, without hurting people too. So just 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 going against, kind of showing like ruining your reputation, basically. Right, exactly. We would you would ruin your reputation if you're yeah. a sellout. You're gonna ruin your reputation. It's like when it's like when rock bands from which, the '70s would sell I, their songs to like commercials. You, you see it on <laughs> yeah. which I don't know. I think I think I potentially might have a number. I, I can tell you. <laughs> I might can, have a number. I, I, I'm just being real, right? I, I, oh, like a rock! Yeah, I can there, tell you, Bob Seger. It oh. would take. It would take a lot. It would take a lot <laughs> because GM Adam. He's interested in your offer. Well, <laughs> yeah. well, you first have to. I I believe that we can have incredible integrity, and I believe that we are capable and on our way of building a fifty to one hundred million dollar company. So. Somebody offering me just a hundred million dollars, which would be typically what the company should be making every year, wouldn't be enough for me to sell out. So it would have to be a, a like change my the my generations of of families' lives forever. So like, you and you, so that type of money you could you could you know you could you could hate me and call me a sellout for the next eighty years that I'm alive, but I know that my children's children are taking care. So of. So here's here's uh, what's happening right uh, now. So let me just explain what happened right now. So. Adam, Adam, you, you're the Adam has a lot of integrity. It's true. So for in order for him to justify selling out, he's thinking about all the people he can help. He's becoming right. the martyr. And I, yeah. I get that. I get that. And you know, if I'm helping other people, and I don't mind doing that either. Right. But so that's why it's like, what do they mean by sell out? Like well, truly sell that, out? Well, that well, I could never sell out and hurt somebody. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no. no let's no take that out of the equation. I think yeah, that's yeah, selling out that's, because that would ruin our reputation. That would be considered selling out. You don't have to go to the levels of we have to actually hurt people. That's yeah, ridiculous, yeah. right? And I don't think anybody would sign up for that, right? That's, no. We're not like that. But that's a very honest I'd question. Hurt bad people. And, and bad I think people. and I think that's a very th- I think I think we have Look to ask ourselves bad. that question. Yeah. I think I th- I love that question and, and I love trying to answer it because I think that we are, are faced with that mm. and I think we have to think about that because mm. at, there will become a point and there already has become points we've already experienced this in this in this right now and if we've laughed at it now because it's not a big number yeah. right people say yeah. things and it's just like who cares like that's not a big deal we'll be making that much money by next year you know what I'm saying like yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. we don't even we don't sweat it but what if what if someone did offer a number that literally sets up the next two generations plus of your blood, man. That's a Speaking hard. Speaking of next generation Pepsi, what if they and, offered and us? It, and if it, you know if, right? No, it's I, a new generation. No, no, really, really. Let's use I some. Think that's an old model. That would be considered uh, selling out. Right? If we started peddling fucking Pepsi, that would be considering selling out. And so, not and I, really, because you like Pepsi too. Well, so exactly, Pick I would be else. willing to do it and, and be See. everyone hate, had, much, hate me forever, knowing that I am able to set up all. Because you know my that would be forever. a big number. Yeah, you know, Britney Spears got some Pepsi money. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, yeah, that's, so, that's money. So like, yeah, like a shitty supplement company. That's it. Like, what about that? Like a shitty supplement. They, company. If they could afford me, yeah, it, does, it doesn't matter what what the what it would the, have to be that insane amount. Yeah, it's the number that's what matters to me. It's yeah. not the company. Because like, then you're thinking about what if else? I'm selling out, I'm selling out. That's how. As long as I'm not hurting somebody like you guys, I think yeah. that's a very fair question you ask. But if I'm selling out, I'm selling out. See, I would feel like, I'm going to yeah. be hated everywhere I go. Possibly spit on. Possibly yeah. people start that, that'll all suck. But if I knew that I, what I was that you're doing, helping a lot of people. Oh man, if I knew what I could well, do different. for yeah, that's, yeah, that's different. Yeah, that's a man. tough one. That's a very that's a very. That's why I like the question. Yeah, that's a tough yeah. one. I mean, so, so I wouldn't be able to sell a product that was ripping people off because then I'd be hurting people. So I'd feel like I was hurting someone. So it, it would depend on what you mean by selling out. The, the, what I would do is I would just offer to sell the company, and then I'd, I'd be done. Do what you want with the company, then. You know, it, it would be tough for me. Well, to Well, that do could it. be considered selling out too. Yeah, right? So yeah, you could say yeah. that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, if, I, I think along the same lines, even I'd that, to, consider that to buy. To, I'm thinking. I am thinking that way. Like yeah. the number I'm thinking, no one's gonna uh, pay us a hundred million yeah. plus dollars to oh, just would, push a product. They're gonna yeah. want the company. So, so yeah, what it would cost to sell the company. I wouldn't have a problem selling selling the company if I if it was something that wasn't. Uh, it didn't feel like it was part of my purpose or you know, it wasn't fulfilling me anymore. I mean, that would be the goal anyway. If once I reached that point, I would be like, well, I don't want to do this Well, anymore. we built it with the intention of that possibility, right? Yeah, right we yeah. built it knowing that, hey, maybe in 10, 15 years, we're not into whatever it is that we're doing right now. Yeah. And we don't want to feel trapped. It has to, feel, it has to be fulfilling. It I just don't see it. I just don't see it. There's not... I'm not motivated like I was for money in the past, although it's still... God, imagine right now. Imagine right now, somebody... We, we're at Paleo FX, right? We're, at, we're here in Austin right now. We go to Paleo FX... And a supplement company's like, hey, I'm selling BCAA powder, and here's my commercial. And it talks about how like BCAA powder increases your bench press by 500 pounds, and you've lost you know, 20 pounds of body fat in, in 30 days. He's like, look, I'm going to pay you $5 million to peddle this shit. 
Uh, what a fucking! I mean, you I say, would la- I'd laugh at it. Yeah, I'd laugh at that number. It's not even. It's it, to me, it, it, it'd have to be something that because you are, you'd be, you'd be ruining your reputation in, in a space that you absolutely like forever in this space, right? Because yeah, yeah. technically, you'd go off and do something else. I mean, you could, you could totally. <laughs> what go, happened to Adam? He's selling yeah. shoes now. He's yeah, the best. right, right. You could. Yeah. Do, I mean, you could. You technically could go do something else, but you would be ruined in the space that we claim to love. Yeah, I yeah. mean, if we truly love helping people like we say we do, and we've been doing it for as long as we have, mm-hmm. I would be knowing that I'm. Fucking over all those people, yeah. it, I would be having to really take care of the ones I love the most yeah. in order to do that. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. And even if it's not that extreme where we're technically fucking people over and we were to even sell out, let's just say sell to a couple other fitness guys that are wanting to take, take care of people, sure, sure. not knowing whether what direction they could take it, sure, which could sure. be a supplement company. Sure. It, it would have to be a hefty number, man. I don't I don't think any of us would want yeah. none of us have any desire to walk away from this thing yeah. for any number. I don't know. When it yeah, when it comes to selling out like that, a lot of people have done it. Rock bands have done it, you know, yeah. you've got a lot of, you know, athletes have done it or whatever. But selling out to hurt people, I could never do that because no amount of money would 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 make that feel okay to me. You know what I mean? I'd have to live with myself. Like that would suck. I could have the biggest mansion in the world, all the money in the world, but every day I'd have to be like, fuck, man, I hurt. Yeah. I bullshitted that many people. Or I hurt that many people. Or I ripped all those people off. Like, yeah, but that would get that would get subside really quick when you're rocking on your rocking chair and you're looking at all your family on your fucking multi million dollar and they're playing with their kids and they're hanging out and they're long. Oh, but hurting and, people is what I'm talking. Yeah, about. Oh yeah, well, yeah, that's, that's what I'm a, talking about. That was. I think you guys shouldn't even have thrown that in there because I don't yeah. think that's even a question for any of us that we would ever yeah. do anything that could potentially hurt people like that. Yeah. I think selling out for us could just mean selling the business and yeah. walking away yeah. from it and you allowing know, and, someone and, to if, do whatever they want with the average. People are honest. Most people have a price for something like that. Everybody has, I think, would have a price. I think everyone does. Yeah, and yeah. I think you're lying to yourself. And of course, everybody likes to say like, oh, I would never. I would never. I would never. Yeah. Like, really, dude? Come on. And I, and I think it's, and again, I think it's an important question to always be kind of challenging and asking ourselves because we're always caught in moral dilemmas of what is best for everybody else, what is best for myself. And sometimes mm. they line up and sometimes they don't. And you have to ask yourself, like, mm-hmm. you know, am I am I doing something selfless right now, or am I going to do something selfish? So I think it's a very healthy question to ask, and I think people that try and fucking act all mighty about it, like, oh, I could, I would oh, never. I can see it happening too, when you know times like go sour real bad, you know, yeah. and like you're you're in this this spot where like things are gloom, and you're like somebody offers you. Uh, something like that. Oh, yeah. That's it, to resurrect things yeah. and to get your life back in order and all this. It's all selfish, selfish intent at that point. Right. You know, even though things. So it's like, you know, I don't know. Judging it too hard, it's kind of tough because, like, I know a lot of people out there that have probably considered selling out. Like, maybe they were like that was like literally like a blessing from from heaven, right? right, right. Coming down. So right. who yeah. knows? I agree. Well, so check this out. Go to your app store. Get the Mind Pump Media app. So that you can search all of our episodes for whatever topics you want to learn about. So you can literally pull up the app and you can type in fat loss, muscle gain, whatever you want to learn about. And it'll pull up every episode we've talked about that particular topic. And it's free. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.